15 people are dead after a mass shooting at a bar in South Africa. Police said a group of armed men entered the tavern and started shooting at the patrons inside. In July 2022, South Africa was rocked by a spate of bar shootings. 22 people were killed at three different bars in one weekend alone. In one shooting, the gunman used AK-47s with more than 100 empty cartridges found at the scene. But how did they obtain such powerful guns? Some point the finger at what might be considered an unlikely source, the police. South Africa's rising gun violence is largely driven by the trade of illegal guns on the black markets. On average, 23 people are shot and killed in South Africa daily. Many of the weapons used are illegal, stolen from police stations or private security firms. Well, more than 500 firearms were reportedly lost from the South African police services. 158 firearms which were being stored at the Norwood SAP 13 store have been stolen. In January 2022, more than 150 guns were found to be missing from a single station in Johannesburg. Forensic evidence of these same weapons revealed them to be factoring in at crime scenes across the country. Police are generally considered to be the most corrupt public institution in just about any country. The illegal gun trade in South Africa, said to be both perpetuated and pursued by police, shows the blurred lines between policing and lawbreaking that are a reality all over the world. This is the business of crime. In this episode, we're looking at how corrupt cops can aid and abet criminals, continuing the cycle of crime and keeping themselves in the job. To start, it's important to understand the conditions and circumstances that foster corruption within a police force and allow it to thrive. What feeds that is social dysfunction as well as limited uh, economic opportunity. Um, and then the exploitation of all of that uh, by these gangs and criminal networks. Bad cops don't come from nowhere. They're created because they're tolerated. There are allegations that police, cartels and gangs are working together. In countries where there are high rates of killings by police or high rates of police corruption in general, it usually goes alongside inadequate laws, inequality and human rights violations. Honduras National Police arresting their former president at his home after the U.S. requested his extradition to the states to face drug trafficking and weapons charges. Governments lacking in trust and transparency with politicians who are themselves corrupt often contribute to a lawless environment typically around you know areas where organized crime is uh, incredibly active or those organized crime networks have really found a way to infiltrate um, police structures in South Africa and, and Brazil where uh, broadly within society there are issues uh, you know whether it's in politics or in other um, arenas where there's corruption in and of itself that's where policing uh, you know institutions may become corrupted themselves in South Africa, police corruption today is impossible to divorce from the country's history of apartheid. In poor black communities in particular, cops still aren't readily trusted. Your average police officer in South Africa is recruited from a community that's low income, that's under-resourced, and they themselves may not have chosen leasing as their first profession. What that then does is open up uh, a lot of uh, doors and windows and opportunities for organized crime to approach police officers and say, do you want to make more money? Do you want to keep your family safer? You could do so by uh, colluding with us either to turn a blind eye uh, or to make evidence disappear. In 2016, former police colonel Christian Prinsloo pled guilty to a laundry list of charges, including racketeering and unlawful possession and sale of firearms. Every weekend there is somebody dying. We don't know whether it's because of all these guns that was selling out to gangsters. With the help of a colleague who worked in the police munitions hold, Christian Prinsley was found to have stolen more than 2,000 firearms in police possession over 10 years, generating more than 2 million rand, or more than $100,000. Ballistics have linked guns that he took from evidence and sold to gangsters to the murder of uh, hundreds of people uh, on the Cape Flats in particular, and the deaths of over 80 children. The problem is far from confined to South Africa. In Brazil, the lines are even further blurred as police struggling to combat organized criminal groups instead cooperate with them to maintain control. In Rio de Janeiro, this is actually like very common. This police has like a practice of seizing guns from the drug dealers and the militias and selling them back to the militias and drug dealers, maybe for a different group, a rival group. 
Most militias have at least some members who are also serving officers. Illegal firearms are readily available, with the market controlled by corrupt military and police officers who have connections to transnational criminal networks and gangs. Faz parte da sacanagem, da sacanagem que eu quero te dizer é o que todo mundo quer ganhar um negocinho por fora, até os policiais, entendeu? Firearms seized by police are often lost, misplaced, or stolen. In 2017, nearly 100 officers in Rio de Janeiro were arrested and charged with supplying powerful assault weapons and police intelligence to organized crime groups. Entendo que o policial que trai o seu dever de ofício trai a sociedade a qual juro defender. I think one of the, the main issues as well in Brazil is the lack of accountability um, you know, around policing. I think because uh, people in Brazil, like in South Africa, feel desperately unsafe, uh, particularly in low-income communities. Um, and so they've ceded an enormous amount of power to the police. A police operation gets underway in the Alamo favela in Rio. They happen almost daily and they're always violent. But in the subsequent years, the alliance between organized crime and corrupt police in Rio has only strengthened and violence has increased. 25 people, including a police officer, were killed in a ferocious gun battle. In the first four months of 2020, Rio police killed 606 people. And that's by their own official count. Even Rio authorities have begun to acknowledge that large parts of the state are no longer in their control. But when the militia also has ties to city and state politicians, the rot is able to fester and spread. It's not, it's not a dirty apple. Nah? It's a rotten organization nah? that is producing rotten apples everywhere. Police commanders, they show the number of people that they expel from the police every year to justify that they are doing something. But they are not doing something because they are distributing blame. They are not responsibilizing the chain of command, understanding the organizational factors that are favoring police corruption and sometimes pushing officers towards police corruption. That's the worst thing. So, how can we stop corrupt cops in their tracks? Sometimes it reflects a fundamental issue with how the police force is structured. Insufficient resourcing, for example, or inadequate training and pay. Sometimes the problem is bigger, going all the way up to the top of the force, the government, or both. Even laws can protect police officers and obstruct justice. The main cop combating corruption in South Africa was shot dead. Is this the risk of trying to address corruption? Now you'll remember that Kinnear, a top Cape Town anti-gang unit boss, was gunned down outside his home. The consequences of, of uh of reporting police corruption can be seriously hazardous. I mean, you know, if you're a senior police officer at a, at a very high level um, reporting corruption, it would not be difficult for the others to work out who it was who spilt the beans and would have to fear for their lives. But as much as corruption is a structural issue, reflecting flaws in a system, it's also a human one. When even the lowest ranking cop has some power, the possibility of corruption is inevitable. 